50s in vogue could almost be summed up by the image of Jean Patchett's sweeping eyebrow or the concave curve of Sonny Harnett's vanishing waist. It was the golden age of haute couture, a time when the fashion legacies we reference today were established by then new designers, Christian Dior, Pierre Balmain, Hubert de Givenchy, Cristobal Balenciaga, and Coco Chanel, who returned to the fashion world after an extended sabbatical. On assignment for Vogue in 1950, Irving Penn photographed the couture collections for the first time. His pictures, graphic and pure, continue to inform how we view and appreciate the art of fashion. Though hyper-feminine and often embellished, waist-whittling fashions were primarily about shape. Two silhouettes prevailed, the new-look hourglass that featured a full skirt and stem-like middle, and a glove-fitted slimline that emphasized a tiny midriff. These were shapes that were, generally speaking, not found in nature, and mostly sculpted using elaborate underpinnings. Corsets, waist garters, and girdles were the tools women used to reconfigure their curves. Dieting was another way women achieved the shape of the new fashions. The magazine continued to adapt its proprietary Diet X, first introduced just before the mid-century, as well as hyping regimes like the New Cottage Cheese, Psychological, Deuces Wild, and Grape Diets. Vogue also gathered a panel of experts called the Diet Authority to weigh in on healthful approaches to weight loss. As waistlines grew slimmer, post-war expansion continued. The scope of the fashion world was becoming bigger and better as well. The first organized fashion shows were arranged in New York City, Italy, and Vogue reported on presentations in Spain, Belgium, and Ireland too. 